Ahoy, this is Pirate Larry from the Pirate Radio Network, sailing out of Ensenada on the good ship Robin Hood. And tonight, we have a special guest, Janik Bayardo. He is uh, working in uh, 8-bit music, electronic music, and uh, he's going to describe the uh, 8-bit electro scene for us here. Ja and I also, we also have Kelvin Jester. Hey, what's up? Kelvin, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Uh, he's my uh, second mate here and, uh, and translator. <laughs> so, Janik, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the 8-bit electro music scene? Okay, um, eight -bit, uh, the 8-bit scene or the cheap music scene, like they like to be called, is a collective of musicians that are interested in making music in 8-bit style. That means um, doing it <clears throat> using the limited using video games doing music in video game systems and using those limitations to make original music most of the time so what, what uh, do they use do they uh, are they are they you know hacking game boys or what are they doing um, some kind it has it instead um, how, how do I say hardware um, no uh, it's like it's like uh, it, ha it has like a crossover with um, circuit bending some in some way that people find um, another good topic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> some kind some ways to alter or modify their systems to be used in music production, like um, expanding the NES channels or boosting the output of the Game Boy, or making clearer sound of the, of the uh, Sega Genesis, and stuff like that. That's great. So when did you get started in, uh, in this? Um, I got started like in 2012. In 2011, um, I, got, I stumbled upon some, some, kind, some rock band called Anamanaguchi from New York City. Mm -hmm. They are, they are a band that at the time they were doing um, pop pop punk music using uh, um, the Nintendo Entertainment System as a synthesizer, oh. and it was so so catchy and and at the time they uh, it was so cool that I said wow I would like to do that 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 looks really cool most of, mostly because um, what appealed to me was that they were using all um, obsolete hardware in another way instead of using instead for just video games they were using the sound capabilities of the NES for making real original music that's not in the context of video games so um, looking upon how they made it or and finding their music I stumbled upon a website called Abit Peoples where I found a lot of other music, lots of free albums, most uh, all of them done or using the hardware itself, you know, Commodore 64s, Nintendo Game Boys, uh, Nintendo Entertainment Systems, and <clears throat> using 8-bit aesthetics to present it, uh, using uh, the old hardware. Uh, or using samples brought from video games, uh, and and I said, "Wow, that looks really, really, really interesting." And wanted to look for, and I started to look at how did they made it. And in 2012, I started a project called Parallax Sound Systems, um, <clears throat> and that's what I've been doing the past four four years or so. Great, and I, you brought us a cut from uh, Parallax Sound Systems. It's called uh, Interference. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you designed this uh, piece. Um, Interference is a track for I'm. Uh, I pitched the idea because at the time, 
some months ago I was kind of nostalgic because there were uh, I'm really um all all music guy I really like most music um, and at the time I was so so into electronic uh, electronic music uh, especially electronic dance music so interference is a track that uh, was born from inspiration from the artists that I was listening at the time, um, fusing um, genres that are uh, subgenres of electronic of EDM that are not so popular right now, like uh, drum step, um, complex troll, stuff like that. But obviously, using um, uh, for this piece, I use two two Game Boys inspired by an uh, artist, an electronic artist called Trey Frey. Who is a, who is a specialist? Some people tell him, tell he's a wizard <laughs> on fusing two two Game Boys. That is for the to achieve a more fuller effect of the music itself. Great. So we're gonna listen to <clears throat> uh, Parallax Systems.
Wow, that's quite an amazing track, and you did that all with eight bits. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Good track. So tell me a little bit about <clears throat> the the scene, Janik. Um, you know, uh, I, I guess you guys have uh, been working, and you've released a couple of albums as kind of a collective. Yeah, um, about the um, the scene, the Mexican scene right now. There is, uh, I'm I'm part of a collective called. Colectivo Chipotle is a collective that uh, it's based, uh, their mission is to share, if I may say so, the or showcase the uh, the chip music scene, the the chip music artists that there are in Mexico. Right now, there are you know there are there are a lot of music. Um, the um, pop music is really really popular here, I guess. Mm. Yeah. So, and and there is not much um, support for independent for independent art independent artists, mm -hmm. the indie artists music. from here. Yeah, yeah and people really the 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 what I what I what I'm trying to say is that there are um, aside from that kind of music, you know, pop music, um, norteño. Uh, cumbia, que tam, uh, it's also very popular, uh, especially around these places, especially <laughs> around here. Um, especially here. The, you know, like the rock music, uh, that is also very popular right here. There are like an underground of art, uh, artists underground that specializes in man, in many other kinds of really really inter uh, unique music. And that's where Chipotle uh, and, uh, is is at. In some way. So, uh, do they uh, <clears throat> do you sell the music? Uh, is it available for download for free? Uh, how does this work? Well, yeah. Um, the Colectivo Chipotle has some albums that are available in Bandcamp. There is a band uh, site called. There are two sites. One is called chipotle.bandcamp.com, chipotle.bandcamp.com, where most of the compilations that Chipotle has gathered are there. Also, Chipotle works alongside another uh, net label called 56 kilobytes per second records. It's kilobytes P B K B P S mm -hmm. records. Yes, I think I spelled it right. Um, that has much, 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 much more music that it's mostly free, but we try to, to... You can support the music. You, yeah, because of, band, of the Bandcamp um, site, you, we encourage people to, don, to uh, support the artist. Great, great. And, uh, my, in the case of Chipotle, there are, we have like five compilations. Mm -hmm. One, two, the, the two Chido Chip volumes, 
to format DF that are compilations for the festivals that we've done. And one that's called Chip Folk, inspired in the folk music from Mexico. Oh, great. Great. So this next uh, tune you brought us <clears throat> is part of the Cheeto Chip uh, um, album. Yes. And it was written by uh, a Carbon Copy? Yeah, uh, Four for Fake is the artist. Four for Fake is the artist, and the name of the song is Carbon Copy. Yes. Okay. And uh, tell us a little bit about Four for Fake. Four for Fake is an artist that I met um, in 2014 when my first trip to Mexico City to form a DF, the festival that we organize. So I met him in an open, ma in an open mic, and, not, um, and he was also one of the, in, in the lineup of the open mic. I, like, I really like the, his style because he fuses noise rock with cheap music, and most of the music he makes is very, really, really raw. Um, that's other thing that character that it's characteristic of the uh, now and I think it's characteristic of the music uh, the cheap music Mexican cheap music scene is that most of the songs are very heavy, some in some ways and really 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 a banger. Great. Yeah, so this guy is really really good and I like his approach of from fusing cheap music with noise rock. This is kind of cool. <laughs> Great. Well, we're gonna listen to Four for Fake and his song Carbon Copy. I'm right up. Okay, that was four. Four for fake. Four for fake, and uh, his song "A Carbon Copy," which you can get on uh, chipotle.bandcamp.com. Yes. Uh, and uh, the name of the album is Cheeto Chip. Volume two. Volume two. Yes. Okay. So great. So, uh, uh, so we've got another song coming up that uh, you did. Uh, at uh, uh, Parallax Sound Systems and... Uh, yeah, so I was very lucky to get two tracks on the compilation. <laughs> also, Crab Sound has two very, very heavy tracks. You should check it out. Great, great. So, um, 
tell, tell me a little bit about this track. Uh, it's called Animals Minimal. Animal Minimal, um, that's a really, uh, that's the story behind that track is really, really a sad one. <laughs> because Animal Minimal it was written like three, three years ago. And um, that track was, was one of the first that I felt that I was achieving something within chip chiptune music um and really the, the the name of the track itself is um it's actually not some kind of special because it popped out right out of my mind when i was writing writing it but i was really proud of that track i uh, uh aside from another so sadly and that's something that most chip musicians are really um, prone to because as we are using all hardware to create this music they are they are prone to f you know, failing and there are really um, test uh, testimonials of um, well, in, an entire cartridge being wiped out with a lot of original music one of the famous ones is um, an artist I, I like called Null Sleep that made a mega mix of Depeche Mode tracks 14 minute mega mix but it was completely lost because it and uh, because it was so heavy of the size of the track that in the middle of a set as far as i know it got completely lost fortunately they started recording well the tra the story behind animal minimal is because <clears throat> the um, because of an error of, of mine i didn't back up the song so that track kind of was lost forever. The only real, um, yeah, let's say, record, I recorded a part uh, the track on the unfinished track a long time ago, and that was really badly done. It was really low and badly, badly produ produced. Um, <clears throat> So I kind of was I kind I kind of lost hope for for that track and although I sometimes I felt that I should redo it, redo it again and re, and I did it because aside from doing it for the compilation a tra uh, months ago really uh, since then a friend of mine heard the song and said hey man that track is really cool you should let me remix it because I really liked it. But I said, I'm sorry, I really, I lost the save. So uh, you're really out of, out of luck unless I do it again. And when this compilation was brewing up, then I said, they said, you can submit in any number of tracks you want. So I said, well, let's try to make this, this track again. And with the crappy recording I had, I had to, I tried to make it the most the best way I could. So, but I'm kind of proud of a track, really. Great. So we're gonna listen to <laughs> "Animals Minimal" by uh, Parallax Sound Systems. Here we go.
that was Animals Minimal by Parallax Sound Systems. And uh, we have as our guest, Janik Pagliardo. He's uh, in the studio with us. And uh, uh, Kelvin, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to ask Janik oh, while sure, we're here? Oh, sure, sure. Before we leave the show. Uh, so Janik, tell us a little bit about the local scene at mm -hmm. your hometown. Well, my, you name you mean here in Senada? Yeah, or? in Senada here. Well, here in Senada, the lo the local music scene is mm, coming along. There are good, good, good projects. Um, mm, the rock music is really is thriving. Is still going. I really like um, some of the bands. I re I started from two thousand and eight um, in music. Because like I've, in a rock band or something. Like in a rock and a rock band, and and I was into the punk scene. Oh, cool. So I'm still kind of myself getting driven back to rock music mm -hmm. again. I, and I would like to do rock music again. So it's like a, a a beginning inspiration playing a rock band or something. Ah, uh, yes. So your project. Well, I'm mostly because I was kind of dissatisfied with this with the music scene. So I wanted to make something of my own, but I I respect the the local music scene, mm, the rock music. I like I tell you is really thriving. They're t still doing shows, um, and we try to keep um, promoting it. Sure. <coughs> well, they try to promote it, I guess. And you have any Facebook page or SoundCloud or other web um, website? Um, you can share with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have uh, two pages mostly where I'm on. Um, the Facebook page is Parallax, the Facebook.com slash Parallax Sound System. Parallax Sound System. Parallax Sound, sound Systems. Systems. Yes. And uh, that uh, links, there's a link to the SoundCloud page that is SoundCloud.com slash Parallax SS. P A L A. Ah, uh, shit, I think I spelled it wrong. Uh, Parallax SS, I think is the or, uh, URL, URL. And also, there's, there's a Bandcamp page called also Bandcamp.com. Parallax Sound, Sound Systems. Systems. Oh, cool. Yes. Also, there is, um, I like to self, um, promote the other pages oh, from sure, the collective. Sure. The Before collective. Yes, called uh, chipotle.bandcamp.org, where this, there's the Chido Chip compilation. Download it, please. Um, the so this, this music is free for all? Mostly. Um, you, can do, you can download it if you want. Um, oh. also, you can donate something? You can, you can donate. Um, we really encourage you to donate some to, the, to us because with the, don with the donations, we found, we found the, first, the format DF Festival, 
It's the largest um, chip music festival here in Mexico. Mexico. It's real. The its organization is like largely inspired from Billy, Billy Festival, which was a long running festival from New York, oh, and we cool. la and we bring um, artists from outside of the country, really good acts. So this is in Mexico City. Yes. Yeah. It's just one one time in a year. Mm, and we try to do it more than one time in a year, and also because and and I and if I don't say that, the the other guys will will want my throat. And there is also the the Festival Metadatos from Tuxtla Gutierrez that is brewing up too, and is gonna be soon also. So check that out, Festival Metadatos, in Facebook oh, cool. and Google. Um. Could you tell us before we leave uh, any funny experience playing live? <laughs> I mean, not just not just here. Any other places you play before? Mm, well, funny. <laughs> well, I can tell you some some. Uh, the most weirdest one was at a. How can I say it? And at a. Kind of. Um, Talent night from a friend that a, that a friend organized. So it was really, I was really, really, really um, tense because normally I really people that are new to uh, to the eight beat music is really um, kind mm -hmm. of indifferent to it. So I was kind of kind of nervous. Really, bully people maybe. Not no. that much. I okay. just kind of indifferent. So. Okay. Um, and I said, well, f um, fuck it, I'm, I'm here, so <laughs> let's do it. But sadly, most of the time, my, one of my cards died that night. So oh, man. that was really, really tense. So and you I, were and in a position, you need to improvise something new. At the yeah, I need, to, I need to really play tracks that I don't play normally, really old tracks. So it was really, really awkward. <laughs> My, the, my, but my favorite one, my favorite experience was when I went to Mexico City because that's where I, um, the, fir the first festival, Formadia festival I went was absolutely nuts. Oh, was cool. yeah, I, uh, The um, reception of the people was amazing and people seemed to have a good, really, really good time. <clears throat> okay, and um, when you are playing live, I mean, not only on your songs live, uh, you only use like a Game Boy or also use maybe one synthesizer, keyboard or something extra? Mm, well, um, instrument, I mean? When, yes, and when I'm playing live, I, I, I really rotate the, the things I use. Mostly the things that are, that are prim essential for my setup are a mixer. Mixer, yeah. Yeah, and like two Game Boys for um so mixing Game tracks Boys, you mean Game Boy Color classical one or mm, mostly yeah. the classic ones because those have the best sound so oh, cool and and re and the the thing is because I use both of them is for mixing one track one into another oh. so it's kind of like like a DJ set because DJ set with Game Boy. oh cool <laughs> but um, well, lately, I've been thinking of mixing it the the, the uh, chipton sounds with um, with other kinds of instruments like synthesizers or implementing drums or implementing um, the yeah because uh, I remember once I saw your show and you use like a causilator or cows pad or something yes that was that is also primordial on in my that is is really important in my setup um, the cows pad is for F um, making tra transitions, f uh, smoother transitions into one song from a, to another. Oh, also, cool. because some of the songs I write use two Game Boys to expand the channels that I can use to make the sound more fuller. Oh, cool! Um, and also, I, I'm thinking of starting a, a side project of ch for mixing chip music with um, guitars or some shit. Oh, cool! So. Thank you to all the people here, <laughs> live here. <laughs> uh, thank you. And don't forget to beside uh, the links, uh, Janik tell us. Uh, I think there will be in the description or something. Yeah, we'll put the links in the show notes for people so that they can click on them and find you. Yes, because I think I butchered some of the links. So it's, 
easier for them to find them. Yeah, we'll, we'll have them in the show notes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, on behalf of the whole crew of the uh, Good Ship Robin Hood uh, Pirate Radio Network, we're happy to have you, Jenny, and uh, encourage all our listeners to go and uh, check out this 8-bit electro music. Yes. It's, it's hot. It's like <laughs> when the old stuff becomes hot. All right, we're sailing on. <laughs> <laughs> 